Good morning, everybody. Many of you have been playing the video game Dungeons and Dragons online and possibly even gotten to the end game. And you hear people talk about filigree, filigree, filigree. You got to get your filigree sorted out. You've probably watched YouTube videos of mine where I say, oh yeah, you figure that out in your filigrees or your filigrees are a huge amount of stats. Or possibly you've just seen a video or a clip of somebody with like a hundred of a main stat, like a hundred charisma. And you're like, dang, how do you get 86 charisma? That's crazy. How do you do that? The answer in a lot of cases, is filigree. So today I'm going to go over what filigree are, uh, how to get them and what they do for you and how to use them. So to get started, what are filigree? Basically, filigree are these little bad boys right here. They come in all sorts of different sets, so they'll have a name. This is a prowess filigree. This is a shattered device filigree, and they are a set bonus item. You equip them to your character and you get the bonus that they tell you. So this says it gives me one strength. And if I have more Shattered Device Filigrees equipped to my character, I get more stats like attack and damage, double strike, and other things. But how do you use these and where do you get them? First, to be able to equip a Filigree set, it has to go somewhere. And Filigrees only go into two different things. They go into your weapon, into a sentient jewel, or they go into an artifact. These are the reasons why weapons or sentient jewels and artifacts are very important. It's the sentient system. So, I have my weapon here, the Inferno's Desire, and it says Sentience, Wave, and then it tells me the XP on it. So this weapon alone um, has a Sentient Jewel in it. You can hear it singing in the background because your Sentient Jewel has its own mind of its own. If I access the system, which is this button here, Modify Sentient Items, I'm gonna drag my comma right over here, and now it's gonna open up the menu. And I can see I have the sentient jewel of the wave up here. This is my jewel. And I have all of my filigree sets in here. So to get started, you need a weapon to put a sentient jewel in and you need a sentient jewel. But how do you get a weapon? How do you even know where you can put it in? Anything of level 20 or higher, any weapon, you can put a sentient jewel in. Although this is an end game system, it's for level 29 plus. So I would recommend waiting till you get to level 29 and get a level 29 weapon. And you just slam a sentient jewel in there. But how do you get a sentient jewel? Let me show you. I'm ready um, to, ship out. To, Where away? to get your first sentient weapon, what you want to do is come to Ravenloft. This is the easiest way to get it. If you own Ravenloft, this is the best way. You want to go to the land of Barovia. If you haven't done Ravenloft yet, you'll have to do the intro quest. It doesn't matter what difficulty, but you want to come here on Epic. By coming in on Epic, you can walk right down this path, and there is a man on the side of the road who gives you a weapon. It's a level 29 weapon, which is perfect for getting started with your first sentient item. So I'm gonna go talk to to Tobar, the smith, and because I'm a comma user, I can just say, oh, hey, you're gonna give me a weapon? Thanks, dude. And he gives me a brand new legendary weapon. These weapons are some of the best ways to get started. So if you own the Ravenloft expansion, don't forget, you can just come get one for free once you're level 29. And I'm gonna take the Morning Lord's comma. It's a very high damage weapon, so level 29 is perfect, and it says there, the little yellow text, accepts sentience. So that means I can actually use this properly. So I'm going to take this. So step one, I now have my weapon. I have my sentient item, and I'm, or my item that I can put a jewel in. But where do you get the sentient jewel? Talk to Tobar again, and he gives you a sentient jewel for free. Um, each one of these has a personality in it. So this is the Jewel of the Hopeful, the Jewel of the Inquisitive, and the Jewel of the Resolute. So just be aware, they will talk to you and they have different personalities. The Hopeful is super bubbly and cheery and is excited about everything. The Inquisitive is more pessimistic and kind of whines and complains a lot. Um, and then the Resolute is just steadfast and always talks about you know going forward and moving forward. So depending on what personality you think it would mesh the best with yours, pick your sentient jewel wisely. So I'm gonna take the sentient jewel of the inquisitive here and just throw it in. So if I want to use this, I then drag my comma over this menu and then I put in my sentient jewel here. Now, a couple important notes. Before I do that, you'll notice that my own sentient jewel, once I put my weapon in, says it has sentient XP. How do you get that and what does that mean? Um, basically, the sentient XP that you have determines how many slots you have on your sentient jewel. So the sentient jewel, this one, because it's brand new, has one filigree slot. So I can put one filigree in. You'll notice that I have nine of them. 
So my weapon alone, just this weapon, just this jewel, is giving me plus two charisma, plus two charisma, so that's four charisma already, or four of them, yeah. Uh, five melee power, nine fire spell power, and four universal spell power, five percent absorption, plus one constitution, and plus two physical resistance rating, five more melee power, another plus one charisma, and three physical resistance rating, and then all of these set bonuses on here. Bonus imbue dice, I'm picking up, um, Fire Absorption and Fire Spell Power, more Imbue Dice. I've got three pieces of Sanctified Fervor for Healing Amp and Melee and Range Power. So getting more um, XP on your Jewel lets you put in more uh, filigrees into it. But that's where the hard part comes in. How do you get Sentient XP? You gotta take your named items, like this legendary Red Raptor Feather, and you have to feed the Jewel. And you feed it by dropping it in here. This is my Jewel, and I feed it by dropping a named item in. The amount of experience you're going to get is based on the level of the item. So for my recommendation, don't feed anything below level 26 because the amounts are dramatically worse. But any item level 26 or higher will give you 10 times its minimum level in experience points. So this will give me 310 experience for my jewel. Now you'll notice I have 158,000 and my next slot is at 210,000. So when I feed this item, Ready for some new rigging? That really didn't do a whole lot. Uh, it takes a lot of named items to fully max out your sentient jewel, and it will take you a very long time. But of course, you can see the obvious benefit right away. I have so much, uh, so many stats that I just get from this weapon, and that's where a lot of people get their super high stats, uh, is by getting their sentient jewel, putting it in, feeding it full of named items, just putting more named items into it. This is not randomly generated gear, so if you happen to have like a sword that you picked up out of a quest, uh, do I have any non-named items? I don't, because I didn't plan that far ahead. But let's say you just pick up like a randomly generated sword, it doesn't work, it has to have a name on it. It has to say like, legendary crown of butterflies or whatever. It has to have the flavor text. You know what I mean, unnamed item. Now, let's go into the second part about this. Uh, a couple of key things that you want to know, just really quick. Um, sentient jewels don't come out easily. So if I have my comma here and I put in my sentient jewel, Excellent. boom. It, you can hear it screamed at me. It's ex it's very happy. Uh, you can see I've got one slot. Uh, it takes 2000 X sentient XP. So it starts out pretty pretty quick. You just feed some items and it goes up fast, but uh, the amount you need will take a long time. If I want to get this out of here, I need an item called a sentience toolkit. To remove a filigree or to remove a jewel, you need a sentience toolkit. So let's just say, for example, I put in this filigree right here because it gives me plus two intelligence. Maybe I'm playing a wizard. I can put the filigree in and it's great. But to get it out, I can't get it out. It doesn't come out. The only way to get it out is to use a sentience toolkit. So you need to be a little bit mindful how you use some of your filigrees, your rare filigrees, or your sets. You want to think about it before you put it in to make sure that you're not um, just you know, kind of throwing it in and getting rid of it. Um, to remove it, sentience toolkit, boop, and now it's out. And it goes back into my inventory, so it's in my colossal augment bag here. That's the reason why they sell colossal augment bags, is because most of what you're going to be picking up in these bags are filigrees. Not actual augments, but the filigrees. They do go in the bag. Uh, they also go in your shared crafting storage, but that's not the point. Uh, so if I want to get this gem out as well, same thing. Sentience toolkit, and now the gem is back in my inventory, uh, so we're all set. How do you get these? They randomly drop in end game content, so anything Ravenloft or beyond will be dropping sentience toolkits from chests. They're rare, but you can get them. And you can also buy them in the DDO store, uh, and I think it's 245 points for 10 or something like that. They're relatively inexpensive, but it still is uh, kind of annoying to buy them. So again, make your decisions accordingly as you go. The last thing I want to say about the jewel, let's just say you hate your voice and you don't want it anymore and you want to use one of the other cool ones, like mine. I have the wave. The wave does not come from Raveloft. It comes from the quest White Plume Mountain and it's one of three sentient jewels that drop there. Um, if you want to get a new sentient jewel but you've already been powering this one up, you can actually feed one sentient jewel to another. So if, let's just say for example, um, you know, I wanted to have, I had a bunch of XP on the Inquisitive and I wanted to use the wave. My wave is in here. I could feed my Inquisitive Jewel to my wave and then all of the XP from my Inquisitive Jewel goes into my wave. Um, artifacts are similar in that they are items that come from quests. You can get artifacts in Sharn, in Isle of Dread, all over the place. It's just a special type. It'll say minor artifact at the top. There's just no gem. So you don't have to put a gem in an artifact. Um, you can just put your filigrees inside of it and power it up. Important note, artifacts only hold three slots, or if they're a Isle of Dread artifact, they get four. 
um, or if they're a perfected artifact, totally different thing. You'll get there when you get there. Um, you can have four slots in them, uh, and you can also only wear one artifact at a time. But artifacts tend to have higher stats. So as it says on here, my Dinosaur Bone Bracer gives me 15 charisma because it's slotted into a artifact. So you get more stats if you use an artifact. Artifacts are good. So every character will generally have one sentient weapon and one, uh, one artifact to get their filigrees in. And the set bonuses are shared between the two. So if I have my weapon here and I've got the um, Wreath of Flame in my weapon, I can also put some Wreath of Flame in my artifact and they'll count together for the total set. So obviously I have all four of them here, but uh, in my artifact, I have currently this one called the Sanctified Fervor and Reverberation. So it gives me two different sets for one. Uh, and I have this in my weapon, which means that I'm gonna get two pieces. So I've got one in my artifact, one in my weapon. It gives me two pieces of Sanctified Fervor and two pieces of Reverberation because I have it in both of them. Um, another thing about the filigrees, when you slot them into your weapons, you can't slot two of the same ones. So you'll notice I have melee power and fire spell power and fire absorption and constitution. I'm a fire character. I would love to put four fire spell powers here, but you can't. You can only take one of each, which means you have to use the different parts of the actual filigree set. You gotta put in the different ones. But there is an exception to this rule. There's always exceptions. You can use the same filigree in your weapon and in your artifact. So with this, I have a Sanctified Fervor Reverberation that gives me Charisma plus two. This is a great filigree. I like getting plus two Charisma. I can't put a second one in here, but I can put a second one in my artifact. And then I get plus four Charisma from these two filigrees. Very, very, very good doubling up your filigrees. So if you wanna squeeze in some extra sets, you can do that. So we talked about what filigrees are and why you wanna get them, but like, how many are there and where do you get them? And that is we turn where we turn to the DDO wiki. Um, there are a lot of filigrees, like there are a lot of filigrees. So it would behoove you to take some time to take a gander through this and look around for what you need. Um, I'm gonna be going over some of the filigrees here, the uh, like kind of like the big highlights, but continue to explore and check it out. But if you wanna hunt down filigrees, the DDO wiki is the best way to do it. They tell you where you get them. So we have the Generation 1 filigrees, which come from Ravenloft, the Disciples of Rage, and White Blue Mountain. They're these ones. The Generation 2 filigrees, which come from Masterminds of Sharn Quest, Soul Splitter Quest, The Lost Gatekeeper Quest, and The Promise of Fire Quest, here. And the Generation 3 filigrees that come only from Saltmarsh, as well as the new filigree from Snow Peaks. So if you want to find your filigree sets, let's say you don't know what you want to use, and you're like, man, maybe I could use City's Beacon. That seems kind of cool. Uh, it gives me magic resistance rating if I have two pieces when I hit people. That's kind of sick. Maybe I'll put that on my melee and do some stuff. Um, that's great. Where do you get it? Well, it's Generation 1, so you know you can go to Ravenloft, Disciples of Rage, or White Plume Mountain. Um, so, let's talk actual filigrees. This is going to be a high-level look at some of the filigrees, what are some of the ones that are good for melee, and what some of the good, good ones for range, and some of the good ones for spellcasters and tanks. Um, we'll start with something that's pretty easy. For tanks, generally what tanks want are health, physical resistance rating, magical resistance rating, and the best filigrees you're going to pick up for that are Nyastol's Mystical Defense. This comes from Ravenloft or it's the generation one filigree. The, most of the filigrees oriented around defense, constitution, uh, elemental absorption and stuff for the individual bonuses. And you get the set bonus, which gives magical resistance rating, all, uh, all saving throws and hit points. 100 hit points is a lot of base hit points and it's pretty nice to have. Other than that, you've also got grandfather's shield, which gives a percentage bonus to armor class. Um, you can also pick up percentage bonus to armor class through the unbreakable filigree, which I should have taken out here as well. So there's quite a few different tank filigrees, but mostly what you wanna do, if I'm being honest, is just put in individual constitutions. Um, so as you go through like the filigree sets, uh, you'll notice here that beast mantle has constitution. Well, that's one constitution. So just shove that one in there. You may know you don't even need the set bonus on a tank. Let's grab blood feast constitution. Uh, let's take a cry of battle constitution and you just get a bunch of hit points. Very helpful on a tank. On a melee, little bit of a different story. Melees have a lot of things that really amp up their damage. So uh, you've got Prowess. This is one of the best filigree sets in the entire game. As the five piece set bonus says, whenever you act activate an action boost, you gain a plus 50 melee power for 10 seconds. Almost every single melee in the entire game will use the prowess set. Uh, this used to be 100 melee power when it first released and it got nerfed to 75 and then it got nerfed to 50 and it's still one of the best ones. So release day prowess was pretty good. 
And the idea is you just press an action boost, which already gives you a lot of damage, like 30% attack speed, and then it gives you 50 melee power, so you do 50% more damage with your attacks. Prowess? Very good. But it's a five-piece set, so you need five of these different filigrees. Chatter Device is another good filigree for melees. It gives you attack and damage, double strike. And then the four-piece set, which is what most people use, when you attack enemies, it reduces their melee and range power by 10 for 10 seconds. This means they take 10% more damage. And making monsters take 10% more damage is very, very good. Then you have Dreadbringer, which just gives melee power, fortification bypass, melee power and fortification bypass. Um, really super good for the set bonuses and all of the individual filigrees are around damage. And then the last two that are kind of an exception, you have the Blood Feast. Uh, Blood Feast is specifically a raging filigree. The 5 piece set makes it so when you rage, you gain 100 temporary hit points per epic and legendary level. If you're a barbarian, you can put this into your weapon. Or what a lot of people will do is they'll have a second sentient weapon. They'll swap to their sentient weapon, rage, get the temporary hit points that has because it has the Blood Feast in it, and then put back the regular weapon if you want to do that. Or you could just run Blood Feast yourself. And then finally, this. Uh, the Sucker Punch and one against many double filigree. Uh, double filigrees that have stuff like this where there are two filigrees put into one, these come from raids and you buy them using the raid currency, the Threads of Fate. So uh, they are harder to get for some, but these are tradable, so you can buy them from other players if people are willing to sell them. This filigree is pretty much the best thing for melee and every melee should use two of these by using, even if you're not a strength-based melee, so let's say you're playing a rogue and you're like a dexterity-based rogue, this filigree set, or filigree, gives plus two strength and four melee power. If you happen to have a second one, one in your weapon and one in your um, artifact, you're getting four strength and eight melee power, which might not sound like a lot, but Sucker Punch two-piece set is for five melee power, and one against many two-piece set is five melee power. So for these two filigrees, you get 18 melee power, which is almost an action boost worth. Really, really good. Even if you're not a strength-based, it's very strong. And if you are strength-based, it's even better. So keep that in mind. Next, let's move on to ranged. Uh, there are not too many ranged, but there, there are, there's a, quite a few range specific filigrees, sorry, but um, a lot of the set bonuses aren't used by everybody. So for example, you have Crack Shot Negotiator, which is like a inquisitive sort of set that gives you diplomacy and stuff and range power. The Long Shadow, which is like sneak attack among other things um, and range power. You've got Deadly Rain, which gives you range power when you use an action boost, except as opposed to Prowess, which is 50, this is 20, so it's much less. And then finally, you have the Wild Hunter, which again, gives you ranged power. Um, what a lot of players that are ranged will do is they'll just use straight up ranged power filigrees. Um, a rare ranged power filigree gives you five. So if you have 11 or 10 in your weapon and four in your artifact, that's 14. So that's an extra 70 ranged power. Just straight up, that's a lot of extra damage. Um, but some of the sets are pretty good. Crackshot Negotiator here uh, gives you 15 range power for three, which is pretty good. Uh, next, we've got the uh, Long Shadow. You can just use two of these, one in your weapon and one in your artifact, for 10 range power from the filigrees and also five from the set. Deadly Rain, same thing. Use a range power in your melee weapon, uh, or sorry, in your bow or whatever your weapon, and one in your artifact. And then finally, the Wild Hunter. You can do the same thing with that, but this one is also pretty good because the five piece set is a many shot charge. If you're a bow character, very, very good to have extra charges of many shot. And let's go to casters. Casters are probably the easiest to understand because you've got a few filigrees here. Eye of the Beholder gives plus two to spell DCs for having a four piece set. That's pretty good. Otto's Irrevocable Power gives a plus two to all spell DCs for a four piece set. So if you have eight filigree slots, let's say five in your weapon and three in your artifact, that's plus four to all of your spell DCs, which makes your spells 20% harder for monsters to resist, which is pretty good. And then we have also Lunar Magic, which you can stack on top of this, because you can have 13 filigree slots, actually there's a maximum of 14, for an extra plus two spell DCs for the five piece set, because you get one, one at three and one at five, which is a lot of extra spell DCs to pick up. Usually spell DCs is what people want. If you ever wondered why somebody has 10 more than you, just consider that if they have this, this, and this, that's already six, not including the fact that you can get Wisdom, Chrism, and Intelligence for Eye of the Beholder and Auto Zero Vocable Power and Lunar Magic, giving you even more uh, DCs because you have your main stat. The general layout for a spellcaster, by the way, is raid double filigrees, as many as you can in your weapon and your artifact. So as an example with this character, I have the double filigree for Charisma, Sanctified Fervor in my weapon and my artifact. So you would do that. 
There's also a double filigree for To Hell and Back, Embraced by Light, which gives plus two charisma. And then you would fill in with the rest of these DC amplifying uh, filigree sets. However, there are two exceptions. One, have you ever wondered why people say that cold damage is the best damage in the entire game? The answer is right here. This is the only filigree set that gives spell crit uh, to one element, and it is the cold spell crit. Frozen Wanderer 2 piece set gives 5% cold spell critical. That means that cold spells have 5% more spell critical than other different spell types. 5% more, more than fire, 5% more than light, 5% more than everything else. So the benefit here is you get to pick up on that extra 5% crit, and 5% might not sound like a lot, but it's pretty huge. Um, that's the reason why you've got cold druids, cold alchemists, cold sorcerers everywhere. That is what you got. And then finally, we have the elemental avatar. Uh, this one, if you're a wisdom based character, you can just use a wisdom in your weapon and a wisdom in your artifact for plus two wisdom and 1% universal spell critical chance, which is not too bad since most wisdom based casters use multiple different spells, healing, force, fire, what have you. So it's pretty useful to have that on multiple different spell types. So filigrees. This is what they are, this is how you get them, and this is the power level. Like, just to put it in perspective, my weapon alone, if I take this off, I lose five points of charisma, which is just massive from just the weapon. My melee power goes down, like my melee power is what? 39 melee power, um, and my spell, my fire spell power is like two or 751. Actually, my fire spell power is my weapon, so that's not a perfect example, but you know. I lose out on 17 melee power from taking off my weapon. I lose out on the uh, five charisma here. So it actually does add up. The filigrees are pretty big and getting them set up is important. So if you want to get started, you now have the tools. If you own Ravenloft, come to Tobar, grab yourself a sentient jewel, put it in a level 29 weapon or higher, which is my recommendation, and then start collecting up your filigrees and using them. The last thing I want to touch on is how do you get a specific filigree? Let's say you're like, okay, Stream Tom, I'm playing melee. I want to get prowess filigrees. I'm going to go to Ravenloft and you start farming it out and you run 10 Ravenlofts and you get like two filigrees because there's like a thousand of them. So you have tons of different filigrees. Almost every chest drops a filigree, but I don't get the prowess ones. I don't have the prowess ones that I want. And that's where trade comes in. Uh, when you get to the end game, make some friends and talk to some people. Everybody has hundreds of millions of filigrees. Look at my bag. Look at this. I have so many filigrees in here. I don't even know what to do with it. So if you need a filigree, join a group. And then while you're playing, say, hey, guys, does anybody have any X filigrees? And uh, uh, people will just come in droves and be like, yeah, no problem. I got tons. People have tons of filigrees. We stockpile them up. Um, and so if you're new, you're just getting started, you're hitting that end game and you need some filigrees, you can farm it out yourself, but it's gonna be way more efficient to trade for filigrees. Um, and in most cases, people will just give them away. If you say, if you're watching this right now and you're like, man, I could use that Dreadbringer Fortitude saves, just send me a message on Argo and I'll give it to you, no problem. Easy, easy ask. Um, it's exactly how we can help you here. Um, so just farm it out, pick them up as you go along. And then, uh, yeah. Oh, I also forgot to mention that filigrees come from any chest in the content. So if you run Ravenloft, every chest drops filigrees, not just the end chest. So if you do want to try to farm filigrees yourself, you're doing some type of solo cell found challenge, or you're like what happens to me, you get to hardcore in the first few, or cap on hardcore in the first few days, and there's no one to trade with, um, loot as many chests as possible in the content as all of the chests will drop filigrees, uh, not just the end chest, which is important. Anyways, that's all I have for you today. So uh, thank you for watching. Enjoy your filigree hunt and hopefully you get a lot of uh, good tools and information out of this video to help you have crazy ridiculous stats um, and to get everything you need. Bye.